Hi Bagley here and my Michael Bottom about songwriting. Who wants to uh, start? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. I just interested. I've interviewed Liz about songwriting and, and how she gets tunes and how she builds stuff. Uh, anything you want to talk about songwriting? Tell. Well, just treat it as if I don't know. We don't know anything about songwriting and we want to learn. Well, I'm a tinker toy songwriter. It's very simple. Tinker toy. Yeah. Uh, I don't do augmented, diminished chords. Uh, I use sevenths occasionally. But the thing for me is that uh, the songs that I'm currently writing is like recovery hymns. And so the average churchgoer may be offended by them. <laughs> but, um, That's the ones I hope that we, you put on iTunes that we can sell recovery well, hymns. We'll Some of them are really good, I've heard. Not gonna happen. <laughs> I can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know, just because of where I'm at, the, the subject matter, they, people I deal with, worship is new to them. The concept of worship is new. And so I found long ago, from going to Toronto, uh, I was at Rafa, and I would play regular vineyard worship music, and they would be bored to tears. They would just sit there. And so when I was at Toronto with the Catch the Fire Conference in 98, uh, Dave Marquis and Bren Hayward, who are two blues musicians, were there. They were leading worship. And I remember walking into the, the uh, auditorium in Toronto, and suddenly I was on the floor. And I was like, okay, what's up with this, you know? And uh, the music was just uh, captured me. So um, I, I bought a Bren Hayward CD and brought it back, and it was the name of the CD was Sly Don't Fret. And it was oh, yeah. blues, and so I remember taking it to Rafa and playing it, and the day I played it, there were, there were 12 or 13 guys there, and every one of them began to cry. It's like it, it spoke to them. So the next time I carried regular worship, I was doing kind of an experiment, and uh, played it, and nothing, no response whatsoever. Play the worship, they cried. And I suddenly, I suddenly realized that that type of music actually went beyond their mind and, and really struck their spirit. So a lot of my worship that's the end of the first quarter <laughs> so a lot of my worship ha is it has a blues feel to it and uh, I, in fact you used to call it roadhouse and so I'm not offended by that and, and, and God uses it God uses it and I think that's the main thing is they is they uh, learn how to worship so that's but that's it that's it so you're gonna put a Harley Dra Davidson uh, Harley Davidson. Well, I mean, a Harley motorcycle sound in the background of one of the. I was just saying about Potato, 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 potato. Yeah, leader of the pack. Okay, so Todd, that probably triggered something in you about writing. And... Well, for me, I've always believed that a song has a heart and a soul. And that's, that's, my, that's the best way I know to say it. I've said that for years. Um, and the simple fact that the words are the heart of the writer and the music is the soul, the expression. And so for me generally where songs come from, uh, the, the lyrics of the words come from either prayer time or study time. Uh, they're, they're generally inspired by my own desires uh, and thoughts when I'm doing prayer. Or they come from reading scripture and I, and I find something in there that strikes a chord in my heart and begin to write. Then take all those words and be kind of uh, simplistic music, uh, musically. Uh, just try to find the chords and the rhythms and things to, to, to find the expression and the avenue in which those words should be expressed. Much like a lead guitarist would bend a chord to add emotion or to, to ex uh, accentuate the, the feel. You did, I try to do the same thing with, with the general chords and chorus. And, sound of the song. Uh, it's an expression of the heart that you can't describe in mere words. How would you describe this change with, in, in, in Todd's um, worship leading when he went to, the, to Grace to the recovery meetings and, and suddenly uh, Michael or somebody brought me back you playing and like y'all went like you felt it's almost like the niche that a recovery, I don't know what you want to say. It's just a, it's a different sound. It was a different it's place. The, the spirit 
Yeah. You know, we used to do that on uh, Saturday nights when we were doing the Saturday night service. Uh, Michael and myself and Nolan Tim. And same thing. Uh, it's just having like-minded people that have the same expression musically uh, and have the same feel. Uh, you can really go in a lot of directions. With a lot, you can have a lot more um, emotional input because you've got four or five different people adding what they're feeling at that time as opposed to one person. Is some of it like, is the grace on it like what Michael was experiencing in Toronto like when, when you got into that setting that particular n night and um, y'all really just hit a different, you found a different groove, you found a different um, place. I mean y'all had been there before I know probably but well, I think for me it's much like Michael's. It's just the, the songs that are on my heart, the, the words that are on my heart, the expressions, but the way we play those songs because of where our hearts are at and, and the type of uh, people we are. I think it just generally is, is more perceived in a non-church environment uh, because it's not typical church music. It's, it's, it's got a, a real honest, um, uh, regular kind of guy's life experience feel. Sure, Green. We are who we are. And, yeah, you can explain that. You know, I don't <laughs> I don't set out to emulate anybody, even though what I play is probably sounds like a million different other songs. But we are who we are and God uses it. I you know I think part of the deal is we're not writing to write a hit. No. We're writing to express what's on the heart. Actually. And it's not always pretty, and it's not always grammatically correct or even musically good. But it's honest. It's very honest. So I think as long as we realize that niche and this is where God wants us and what he wants us to do, then there'll be anointing to do it. Let's end the second quarter. Yeah, a great song is not necessarily one that's played well or arranged well but it's one that speaks to another person's heart and soul. That is that is what makes a great song. Is if, if you've got something that came from your heart and soul and it's something that you was in, either inspired by God or give, you know, something that you've been inspired with to give back to God, if that is a great song to you, then you've accomplished what you set out to do. If it's a great song to other people, it's because it ministered to them in the same way that it did to you, something that they can relate to. That's what makes a song great, not necessarily the sound or the style or the composition or the complication of it, but merely does it does it do what it's supposed to do in the fact that it stirs someone's heart and soul. Any last comments? No? Write what's on your heart. Write what's on your heart? Absolutely. Absolutely. Write what's on your heart. Um, and as Michael said, in the fashion that it's on your heart and, and with your words, with your language, and not try to fancy it up. I'm turning the page, I'm moving on.